What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitchy Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before I get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. This is the biggest daily baseball show on YouTube, and we need you to be a part of it. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Marcus Stroman, who had six strikeouts and six scoreless innings, thanks to these wicked breaking balls and his two-seamer. Marcus Stroman's ERA this season remains at zero. He faced off against Nate Evaldi, who had this fastball and splitter, and had six Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs. Edward Cabrera had a weird line. He gave up no hits in two and two-thirds innings, but had seven walks and four Ks. His stuff, though, was filthy. He had these nasty breaking balls. But the real story of the game was his change-ups. Look at this 94-mile-an-hour change-up that ran 21 inches. And before you say his change-up is too fast, it is extremely effective, just like Sandy Alcantara's is. Opponents hit 172 against his change-up last year and 143 against it this year. He was up against Tyler McGill, who had three Ks and six scoreless innings, thanks to his fastball, curveball, and slider. Clark Schmidt didn't have a great outing, but did have these nasty sweepers. Chris Bassett bounced back from a terrible first outing at 5 Ks in 6 innings thanks to his sweeper and these two seamers. And I love this with Bassett against Otani where Kirk points to a spot for the changeup and Bassett basically hits that spot exactly. He was up against Patrick Sandoval who had this changeup and gave up only one run in 6 innings but only had 2 Ks. Logan Gilbert had 6 strikeouts in 4 innings thanks to his curveball and his new splitter modeled after the ghost fork. Hunter Green had five Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs. He came out strong, annihilating the side with these fastballs, and got this sword on this slider, but struggled a little later in his outing with some command issues. His stuff, though, is really good. He battled Zach Wheeler, who had these fastballs on his way to five strikeouts in five and a third innings. Brandon Woodruff had four Ks in five and a third scoreless innings thanks to his fastball. And look at this sinker movement. That thing drops off the table. He also had a nasty changeup and slider. Mackenzie Gore had six Ks in six innings, giving up only two runs. And he had these beautiful curveballs. Zach Eflin had seven Ks in six innings thanks to this filth. Jose Arquiti had this nasty changeup, his fastball and sweeper working, and six Ks in five and a third innings. And he faced off against my filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Sonny Gray. That rhymed again. Gray had an amazing 13 strikeouts. And if you wondered why, look at the movement on these pitches. His breaking balls were breaking a ton, and so was his two-seamer. Look at the run on those. And when he puts that all together, he is unhittable. And I'll use these overlays to show you why. First, here's a slider way off the plate that gets a take. And then he throws a two-seamer right in that tunnel that ends up pretty much middle-middle. He can get a take on a middle-middle two-seamer because that movement is huge. And you can see why a hitter would give up on it. And then he can also get a chase on a breaking ball off the plate by tunneling it with a two-seamer that was a strike earlier in the count. Just an absolute masterclass by Sonny Gray. And now onto my filthiest relievers. And boy, there were a lot of filthy relievers. Felix Bautista had these vicious splitters. Andres Munoz had this beautiful slider. And here it is on a Codify heat map for Munoz versus Naylor. And you can see how much blue there was where he threw it. Alex Young caved the side. Ian Hamilton had these nasty sliders. Josh Hader had these overpowering fastballs. Matt Brash, one of the kings of filth, had this. Michael Fulmer had this sick stuff. Look at that. Miguel Castro had this slider for a sword. Adam Adovino had these two seamers that ran 24 and 21 inches. 24 inches back to the plate. That's nuts. And here is that two seamer overlaid with his slider. And you can see the crisscrossing action he gets. Some black magic stuff. Araldus Chapman had this filthy splitter and slider. Yuan Duran had this disgusting stuff. I don't know how anybody ever hits this guy. 
Speaking of guys you can't hit, Jose Alvarado absolutely destroyed the side. El Diablo now has eight Ks in three innings this year. And with that stuff, it's no wonder why. Jason Adam had this changeup that actually hit Loriano in the chest and got the swing and miss. Talk about adding injury to insult. I think I would have pretended I got injured just so I got some sympathy and so everyone would forget about what I just did. But my filthiest reliever yesterday was Brent Honeywell. Honeywell had this wicked sweeper, but the filthiest pitch of the day was this screwball. Talk about falling off the table. Look at that. And here it is overlaid with his fastball. And this really accentuates that movement. You can see how those pitches look the same and that screwball totally disappears. That is an ungodly pitch. And here's Brent Honeywell's screwball grip. It's more of a breaking pitch that mm -hmm. I throw to both right-handers and left-handers, and it's just the opposite way of, that, of a curveball. So it, it would come off this way other than that way. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. It's Travis Kelsey throwing out the first pitch. And, oh no, he nearly killed Shane Bieber. But he did crack up Patrick Mahomes. Here's that first pitch with a tail. While this first pitch was terrible, I'm not sure it was the worst first pitch by an athlete of all time. You have John Wall, Carl Lewis, Conor McGregor straight sideways throw, and even Michael Jordan, who played baseball. I thought Kelsey's form was actually decent. I mean, here's his mechanics matched up against Gronk Spike, and they look pretty identical. Do you think this was the worst first pitch by an athlete of all time? Let me know in the comments. What's up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Nick Lodolo for 7Ks or more, then take Kodai Senga and his ghost fork for 7Ks or more, and top it off with Jeffrey Springs for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?